Hi there, Wangelan here. Today I'll show you the little place where I do all my sound design, music production, game development, video creation and so on. I'm gonna call this the studio tour because that's the label the internet has decided to give telling people about a room that exists. But my studio is also literally just where I live and spend every waking hour of my life and so yeah, have a look. Starting off with audio equipment, I've got two Rode NT1As that I use for all kinds of microphonery. Usually I only need one of them, like for recording my voice or small objects, but if I want to capture the detailed and lusciously wide sound of larger things, then I use both microphones. In that case I just plug the second one into my mixing table device thingy, the Behringer Q802 USB, hard pen both channels left and right and make sure that my Windows microphone input settings also allow for two channel stereo recording. I've also got this portable recorder, the Tascam DR60D MK2. Gosh, what a f***ing funny name. <laughs> Which has two XLR inputs and runs on a few AA batteries. So far I haven't used it that often, since most of the things I want to record I can just get close to my microphones at home, but that doesn't work for everything of course. Some examples of this would be outside ambience, like noises of the city, a forest, rivers, and so on. But this also goes for stuff that's simply too big to fit into my tiny room. Like my mom's car. Sometimes you can see me wearing a lavalier microphone, which is a type of microphone you can attach onto or hide behind a shirt. I use the Rode SmartLav, because it's not that expensive and mostly does what I need it to do. It's not awesome and in some videos I've used this and you can actually hear my clothes or hair making loud noises when rubbing against the microphone. As you might have noticed, a decent chunk of my walls is covered in this acoustic foam, which reduces echoing and reverb in my room. I've made a video about sound treatment in the past, but don't watch that, it's awful and makes you really uncomfortable, but in that video I've mentioned how there are many different ways to acoustically treat a room, and these thin foam panels just aren't the most effective method. What I'm trying to say is there's plenty better materials, like thick, floofy blankets and stuff that would make my room sound even nicer, but that's all I've got so far. Next time I move into a new place I'll definitely use something else for sound treatment. Another issue I have with my current setup is the color of those panels. Light doesn't bounce off this black foam very well, so the area around my desk is usually pretty dark in like a bad way if that makes sense. Lighting my room when filming videos is also a bit difficult because of this. MIDI controllers. I've got a little one on my desk. It's the Native Instruments Complete Control M32, which I actually didn't have to pay for. I won it at Andrew Huang's remix competition for the song Yours a few years back. It's very neat, I use it all the time when composing things and even during sound design sessions. Being able to physically press a key in front of me to preview a sound is saving me so much time over having to navigate my cursor on all the plugins to click a button in FL Studio. Of course I could always just keep the sound and processing on loop, but that's not as nice. Beneath my desk, right next to the monkey with the handgun, there's a little foot pedal or sustain pedal which I use to make the funny virtual instruments do the funny thing, like the the, the sustain, like on, on the on the piano. Uh, piano. We write this part late. Oh no, wait, that's <laughs> that's a note to myself. Video gear. This is all the stuff I use to film my videos. The camera I use is the Blackmagic Pocket Cinema Camera 4K with uh, this lens and this tripod. I used to work with a Canon ES1200D for many years, but it just stops filming after around 11 minutes and I had to manually check that it's still running all the time. It was a giant pain to use and the video quality was also hindering me from getting good, nice, juicy results when working with green screens. Speaking of which, I've got this huge green screen that only fits into my mom's living room. But for smaller applications, this foldable green and blue screen works just as fine. It's also easier to set up and only needs a bit of folding to stash away as opposed to a lengthy deconstruction session. I'm weak and my arms are spaghetti, so I very much prefer this. These are the various lights I use. This is not a tech review channel, so I'm gonna spare you the details and just slap the product names onto the screen. Here's a funny softbox. Here's a funny ring light. Here's a funny LED panel. Here's another funny LED panel. And here's a tiny LED panel. And I've also got this old broken monitor that I removed the polarizing filters from, which I also sometimes use as a light. I'm too scared to fiddle with the actual controller balls on it, so right now it turns off like a minute after being plugged in. I don't mind this though and didn't run into too many issues with it. You can see the monitor in action at the very start of my last video. Oh, and I can't forget about the LED strip on my ceiling. It's pretty and nice and cool and poggers. Poggers. This is my desk. 
I sit here all the time, working on stuff, playing video games, working on things, working on stuff, making things and stuff, doing things, making things, doing stuff. I've got some Krautnoten here, which is a Dutch snack my girlfriend gave me. This is also where I keep my M32, some other small goodies like lipstick, a little garlic shaped box, pens, a glass of water and so on. This is a photo of my girlfriend and me. In fact, it's the very first photo we took together. In case someone's watching this in the far future, we're in a global pandemic right now and we took this photo outside at a train station, hence the masks. Up here I've got more pens, usually also some dishes and a flower. I've also got a little cloth pin glued to my desk, so I can clamp this cable onto here and always have it in arm's reach. I forgot what the specific type of cable is called, but the audio recorders I use needed for file transfer. I've got two monitors, which makes working with multiple programs at once very easy and nice. When I design sounds for animations or video games, for example, I have FL Studio on one monitor and a live video preview plus my sample manager on the other one. In general, having two monitors makes a lot of things more convenient, and I don't think I could ever switch back to only one. I've been spoiled. Oh, uh, that being said, the left monitor has some weird image burning issues, though. This cute little drawing my girlfriend made and I put on my desktop likes to appear in other applications I put in front of it, especially ones with large areas of solid colors. I'm very used to this and I don't really plan to replace this monitor until it completely breaks down at some point, but that ghost of a drawing does tend to get in the way when I'm doing visual art stuff like spriting or painting or animating something for my videos. Inside my closet there's just a bunch of clothes, blankets, stuff like that, you know? But this is also where I store most of my video gear and some other stuff like small music instruments, cement powder, various batteries and other junk I need from time to time. Over here I've got even more random stuff like books and manga I've never read, um, or hair ties, medication and important letters that are very important. Stickers! Most of these are little drawings of my girlfriend and me, drawn by either of us. Some other ones are just funny little pictures or stickers of neat internet things. And there's also another print my girlfriend made above my door. Mmm. Cute. This is my bed. I sleep here. Underneath my bed I've got tools and all kinds of doohickeys I sometimes need to repair things. Stuff like nails, screws, a hammer, a bunch of screwdrivers and so on. Oh, and I've got a trans flag on my wall because, guess what, I'm transgender and very cool. <laughs> Thank you all for watching my silly little video. If you would like to support my work, please consider pledging a few dollars on patreon.com slash wangline. And as always, I would like to highly thank all my current patrons for making all this stuff possible. So, huge thanks to Tobin, Great, Zach LM, Captain Bubs, Anna Koik, Catherine, Katana, Christy Kamori, Sophia Figueroa, Foxy Vivi, Gray Figment, Rachel Ray Mills, Jane the Human, Teddy Edwards, Declan, Silver, Misty Burgess, Sora, Windu, Ali Spectacular, Benjamin Burns, Dive to the Heart, Robin Song, Dennis Quinn, Lou, Hexagon, Sam Plus, Alex, Jay Manning, Flower Gothic, Ram, Leo, Matt MML Lucas, Rainbow Messenger, DJX328, Andy Chamberlain, Brandon, Tenby, Day, and Alison Madden. Once again, thank you so, so much to all of you, to all my Patreon supporters who are supporting me. <laughs> thank you for watching this video all the way to the end, and I'll see you next time when I stumble onto my desk. Okay, bye. <laughs>